Circle K is selling weed. What the heck is fan base? An update on WNBA star Brittany Griner and much more on this edition of Word on the Street. Now let's rock. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Here to give you knowledge that you didn't know. Put you on some game. Now you got a buzz. You are now listening to Canada Bros. Circle K is selling weed. So this is all right, so this is happening in Canada, right? Yeah, so uh Fire and Flower is the company, and looks like they're teaming up with Circle K out in Canada. Mm. And so uh what they're gonna start doing is uh attaching both of them. It's gonna be like a a, a subsect of Circle K, and they're gonna have like a little dispensary um attached to it. Wait, you mean like so okay, so like how we have like an Etson and a Wendy's? That, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you pull up to Etson and you're like, yeah, oh this this exactly. third of the store, this exactly. third of the store is a dispensary now. Exactly. You know you got uh, that fire. blimp the seven seven eleven and blimpies. Right, right. <laughs> right. According yeah. to the Green Market Report, so it says the company said the two stores in Calgary and Grand Prairie that's that's in Canada, not in Texas. Right. Uh, I almost got uh, almost got excited. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Are I'm expected sorry. to be the first of additional opportunities to collate co-locate cannabis retail stores in the future. Mm. So the statement said that the co-located stores will be owned and operated by Fire and Flower and are separate from the adjacent Circle K in accordance with all applicable uh, reg regulations. Mm. But, you know, just that, again, like I was saying, that's it's the future now. So granted, that's in, that's in Canada, but once it's legalized whenever that happens and the u.s the gas station is gonna be like all right you know we gotta we gotta hop on this so now you're gonna have chevron no, it's and true it's gelato it's true. <laughs> yeah yeah Chev chevron and gelato you know uh premium and pre-rolls you know they're just going you know when you uh get gas and it asks you if you want a car wash <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how look that first of all, I know we're making jokes with that, right? But that is genius, right? Because what's the biggest thing that sells? What helps sell everything in in America? Convenience, exactly. Right? Convenience. So imagine if you're like, yeah, like you said, get rid of the car wash, drive through dispensary, right? right. So like where you would have the car wash, <laughs> you're able to get your gas Ooh. and then go right through the back. Ooh. You know, put the arrows on the ground, go right through the back. I like you, that. Right? Drive through. So there's a whole window. It's a dispensary inside, but there's a window. Look, man, it's going to change the game. <laughs> All kinds of legal implications are just flashing. What <laughs> <laughs> <Or> happened? <laughs> gas and gas. Gas and gas. Not No longer Johnson and Johnson. It's gas and gas. G&G. It's g and But as we, as we transition into the States, Let's talk about, uh, and as we talk about dispensaries and, and smoke shops, did you did you see that video um, in California about with that 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 shooting that happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, man. It was a, a a shooting at the the smoke shop, and so what happened was like the security guard was behind the counter. And just doing his own thing, playing uh, Candy Crush on his phone, and these <laughs> these guys come in, and you know they 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 act like like they're just browsing or whatnot. And then one guy from from behind the three guys rolls up with a gun, pointing it at the 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 clerk. Well, the clerk is a trained security guard, and he got the strap on his hip, so he he pulls this uh, pistol out, and now it's a gunfire back and forth, and Unfortunately, he got hit a couple times. Uh, some of the suspects got hit. He survived, though. <clears throat> Thankfully, he made it to the hospital. He survived. One of the suspects did. Mm -hmm. But this is is interesting to me on on a few different levels. Because one, you know, we we've talked about the the war on drugs in the past. 
how, how it uh, impacted the minority community, the black and brown community. But now we're, the war on drugs is still happening in the present. And how do we prevent it in the future? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to lose my life trying to <clears throat> work inside a dispensary. You know, I mean, I'm thinking one step further. You also don't want to lose your life going to a dispensary, right? Mm, like, right. When a bystander, you could have been in there shopping at the dispensary. And I think, honestly, I think our federal government plays a role in this. I think they play yep. an instrumental role in this. By their inaction, they're actually helping <clears throat> fuel this type of, of continued war, right? Yep. Um, and it's not one person in particular, but this has been a long standing issue that has needed resolution for a long time. And as states become legal, we need to stop playing around with this. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of this is tied into the fact that these dispensaries sit on a lot of cash. Yep. They sit on a lot of cash yep. because they cannot put their money in our federal banks because the federal government still views cannabis as a schedule one drug, which yep. makes it illegal. Um, which is confusing, right? Because it's illegal mm -hmm. while it's legal. Right. Uh, and, and it's dangerous. They are putting people's lives at risk and we need to take that seriously. Thinking like a street guy, I don't think there's an issue where they're like, oh, you can't sell, you know, or we, we have an issue with you selling cannabis. They don't, they don't have an issue with you selling cannabis in their neighborhood or whatever like that. But because there's such a, a divide, right? That it's like, well... If it's just illegal, illegal here, it's illegal there, it's, it's illegal yeah. there. It's the black market versus the regulated market. Mm -hmm. And it, and that's what you get. That's the way we see it. I mean, a shootout, maybe maybe not literally. In this case, it was literal shootout. But there's always going to be a war because mm -hmm. it's like, well, these people are able to participate, right? So then the black market thrives in that way. And then these people are able to, but then it's only in these states. And then that just creates confusion. Well, let's backtrack. A lot of the businesses in general are small businesses, right? They're mm -hmm. um, mom and pop businesses, right? Meaning that they're owned by uh, individuals like you and I. Mm -hmm. And then you look into uh, the four to, I'll say 10%, if that, of minorities that actually own those businesses um, and the lack of capital to to fund those businesses by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So if if you're stretching, if you're stretching your the almighty dollar just to get by, you don't have enough revenue or income to really afford security like they had security in yeah. that video, right? Yeah. And with with Antoine, it's like it's Robin season. It's Robin season. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Robin season. Like you you have it. I want it. You can't stop me. And then on top of that, when you when you talked about insurance, if the store gets robbed, how are they getting that money back? And that threat is is real. Um, I have friends who are in California who have dispensaries, and I've wanted to feature some of them in some of my programming. And I'll tell you, they're like, please don't feature us because mm -hmm. they're actually afraid. They're mm -hmm. afraid that by featuring them, um, it will draw attention to them. And Make I'm like, target. that's that's a hor that's not how you run a business. Mm -hmm. um, not, not a condemnation. I understand why they're afraid, but mm -hmm. they shouldn't live in that fear and have a business in this country. We really have mm -hmm. to do better. Right. We have to do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody looks at, you know, if you're involved in cannabis at all, you know, you looked at like a danger to society or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, I mean, oh, for people that are anti-cannabis, it's just the truth. It's like, oh, you compared to someone else, you know, in your line of work, but in a different industry, you know, um, you know, they're protected. There, there, There's laws, you know, and you're looked at on a different level as a business owner. Well, these are business owners. You know right. what I'm saying? These are, these are people, hardworking people who, you know, had an idea, brought it to fruition, and now they're looking to feed their families and maybe, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, in better circumstances, uh, provide generational wealth for their families. And as we continue to fight for more inclusion, more black and brown faces in ownership, right? And black mm -hmm. and brown faces and green spaces in general, right? Mm -hmm. Then we, it's kind of like, we don't, we're not trying to set you up here, right? <laughs> like, right. That's, that's, that sucks, right? So we're like, oh, inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. But then we also have to make sure that we continue to fight 
you know, for changing legislation, you know, and make sure that you vote, you know, you know, that mm -hmm. you actually participate. You can't just say, you know, think about what you hope and wish uh, to happen. Right. Like you got to start strategizing. You got to figure out what measures can you take? What resources do you have to uh, enable change? Yep. And that's just the truth, man. Yeah. And, and as we talk about legislation and changes in cannabis law, uh, I think that's a perfect segue Ooh. into the representation of lawyers and yeah. cannabis. And not, and not only lawyers. What are we talking about? We're talking about the National Association of Black Cannabis Lawyers. Woo! Talking about the NABCL. Let's go. Let's go. Man, we got to have more information on Wait, We do have more information <laughs> on that, right? Right? Because we have someone that would know a little bit more than we know about the National Association of Black Cannabis Lawyers. We have Natasha Andrews herself. So, Natasha, tell us a little bit more about the NABCL. Natasha, Natasha, me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Had to flip it, bam. <laughs> Get a ball, right? so, um, the National Association of Black Cannabis Lawyers is basically a watchdog group. We're a group that are out there advocating for changes from a federal level, right? Mm. Um, I look at it this way. We are the United States, but at this moment and in with, with regards to this issue, we are the 50 divided states of America because you don't have the same law from state to state. And it's it's kind of absurd. It's kind of surreal. Um, it's not how laws usually work. We usually mm -hmm. govern from the top down. And this is sort of a hodgepodge that comes from the bottom up. And mm -hmm. as a result, we're seeing, um, you know, you'll see one thing in one market and something completely different in another market. Some markets are very strong on social equity and social justice and doing things like correcting or creating more balance from um, the war on drugs and the damage that the war on drugs caused to certain communities. And some are kind of quietly pretending that never happened and it's business as usual. And they're creating these, these um, I don't want to say monstrosities, but these, these uh, um, they have people who are just the giants in the industry and they're mm -hmm. taking over an industry when MSOs. probably the same people who are condemning folks that were using cannabis. Now, all of a sudden we see a little green, we see a little bit of opportunity here. Yep. The NABCL is really focused on keeping an eye from a federal level because although a lot of really good advocacy and a lot of really good um, things are coming out state by state, it's such a patchwork. Um, I found that I was concerned about who's watching it from the federal level, who's mm -hmm. truly watching out to make sure that issues of social equity and issues of justice are going to be implemented. And I say mm -hmm. going because I'm not just hopeful that this will become federally legal. I know that it will. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of the right people have to step up and do what needs to be done but the United States would be extremely remiss not to do something here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but we have a tendency to be distracted by the, um, the, the, you know, the little things that happen. You know, we're quick to be like, oh, wait, who slapped Will Smith? Wait, Will Smith smacked mm -hmm. who? Right. And, and we keep our, we take our eye off the prize, right? Mm -hmm. And while our eye is on some other distraction out there, laws get slipped left and right. Mm -hmm. And we turn around and we're like, well, when did that happen? How did that happen? So I really sat down and I started talking to my peers in this space. And I realized, first of all, there weren't a whole lot of us in this space. And I had concerns about that because mm. when you're not at the table, when decisions are make, being made, guess what? You're left out yep. and you're wondering how come this legislation doesn't take in these things? How come it doesn't consider certain things? How come these laws are being passed and there is no avenue for that equity? It's because we weren't at the table when the decisions were being made. Right. The sad reality is no one's looking out for you when you're not there. It, right. It's true. Um, and so I said, you know what? I'm not asking for permission to be at the table. I'm sitting at the table. And if I have to stand on the table, I'm standing on the table. Let's go. You know, Let's go. the Howard Law grad in me isn't sitting by while laws are being created right. in our absence. Because my thought is, we were there to pay the price, so right. we need to be a part of the pot, right? Um, nice. And so I started calling. I started calling uh, colleagues. I started reaching out to 
people I went to school with. And I didn't care what um, discipline or what area of law you were in. I didn't care if you were real estate, if you were contract, if you That's were right. immigration, if you did, you know, if all you did was push papers around. I'm like, we need to get our heads together. We need to make our voices heard. And we mm. need to start talking to people and planning for that future, that that federal level and not this whatever we're doing on the state level. Mm -hmm. right. And it's been incredible. The journey has been really phenomenal. I have some great people that I'm partnered with. We are partnered with organizations that do advocacy, things like expungements of records, making sure we get in there. We're tied to the last prisoners project. And we really, oh, we nice. get in there, we put our heads together. And it's also a time to learn because the thing folks don't realize is this is new for all of us, right? I don't mm -hmm. care how long you've been in the game. I don't care what part of the game you've been in. This is new for all of us in some way, shape or form. So why don't we put our heads together and learn together? I'm not a real estate attorney, so yeah. I'm going to need you to work on your piece while I work on my piece and we bring it off. Oh. What can people do? What do you feel people can do to aid in what's next? And what do you see as being the next step towards, you know, solving this problem of the way cannabis is treated? Um, I think you can't be passive, right? I think there are some people who still really have their head in the sand. Mm -hmm. They're thinking this isn't coming. And I'm like, we got to stop thinking like that because that doesn't resolve anything, right? You said earlier right. that hope is not a strategy, right? Yep. So yep. even if this isn't your world, right? You don't you never touch cannabis. You don't have anything to do with it. It's coming, right? So yep. just ignoring it doesn't resolve anything. I say be very active because the ways it will affect you are multi-level, right? right. Um, if your state is legal, I promise you the, the companies, the businesses in your state have to have policies and procedures on how to handle cannabis in the workplace, right? Yep. So that affects yep. um, where they're going to place dispensaries and where farms are going to exist is mm. going to affect you. Yep. So be involved in that. And if you don't know it, if you feel like, well, I just don't understand it. What, why are we doing this? Find out, you know, Google it, like talk to somebody, mm -hmm. get involved. Yeah. Because when you vote for these candidates, you talked about voting earlier. You're voting for a lot of things, you know, and, and hold these politicians, hold the people who are there to serve the communities, hold them accountable, right? Don't That's let right. them make empty promises. Hold, hold their feet to the fire on this because it does affect you. Where that tax revenue is used in your community is important to your community. If you live somewhere, it's important to you. And right. I know a lot of communities set up uh, meetings so that people can give their input, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't show up to that, don't be mad that your kid's school doesn't have books. Yeah. Mm, don't be yeah. mad that, you know, there's still potholes on your street and there is no rehab program. You can't right. be upset about it if you're not going to participate in it. So yep. I can't emphasize enough that participation really matters. And it matters with all things, but this is really new. <laughs> this is really, really new, but it's going to impact all of us. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't matter how you feel about the plant. It's going to affect you. Yeah, will have a say so in how it affects you. And there's there's so much to unpack off of all of that. Um, and this this is one of the great things is we're in the midst of a superhero. Come on, a super hero. Okay, she, she's out here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the cannibal had to do that. The cannibal uh, had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Super let's go. <laughs> yeah. So Corey, you know, you know who's in the building now. Yeah. Man, look, yeah. we talking. Look, Natasha Andrews, we appreciate her. Thank you for <laughs> thank you so much for being on. Next time we speak with her, we'll make sure. You know what I mean? We continue to give her flowers and, our, yep. and, and share our platform with her. Yep. Amazing work that that sister is doing. But now we got to transition. Be net, because now we're talking about the cannibals. Man, you're familiar. <laughs> 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 yeah. So look, cannibals. We look. Yes. Man, there's so much to, to, to get into when it comes to you. But before we get started, just tell us where does the name, the cannibals, and I'm gonna tell you, I know they already are spelling it wrong. So we make sure when we throw that thing on the screen, 
and throw it <laughs> throw it up in the description. We have it all right. But where does the name the Cannaboss come from, and why does she exist? Okay, so <laughs> so the Cannaboss exists because Natasha Andrews Esquire. There are certain things she can't really say. <laughs> right, right, right. And there are certain mm -hmm. things that she knows that she can't package in a certain way. Right, um, and. Even though I came reluctantly over to social media and into the, the limelight, that's really not what I was looking to do. Um, I, I know, I understand the beast, right? I understand what it is. And I understand that you have to, you have to adapt, right? If you're going to be relevant, if you're going to be impactful, you have to be willing to adapt. And that's mm -hmm. a big thing I tell people all the time. So I had to also adapt. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna lie, first couple iterations of the name weren't so cute. Um, <laughs> and I had to implore the help of a 16 year old who will be remain nameless. Um, and a boss <laughs> was thrown out there um, and we decided to play on the name. So again, sorry, mom. Um, so the canna, of course, for cannabis and yes, the yes. boss for uh, as a badass woman straight executing. Cause that's Ooh. what I needed to tell myself every day that every day when i get up i need to remember that i am a bad ass woman straight executor wow. mm. and i'm from jersey so we don't say boss right we say boss so <laughs> <laughs> so it all came together <laughs> yeah yo yeah. it's dope it's man dope. i didn't know it was an acronym that's it even, that makes it even <laughs> look look that's look, crazy and I, I had a little help like i said i had i got for some reason, badass woman came easily. And then I'm like, straight. I'm like, I need an E word. I need an E word. And my 16 year old was like, executing, mom, executing. I said, all right, then. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and a boss executes. And I, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cannabis is the closest that we've gotten to closing the gap. You know, I've said it before, closest that we've gotten to closing so many of the gaps, whether that's due to gender or ethnicity, you know, America is just built on who can come up and making sure that someone's down. This documents here is supported by historical data. This is what we're doing over here. I know best, listen to me and follow me to the promised land, you know, and the can we can follow the can of boss to the promised mm -hmm. land. So, mm -hmm. you know, shout out to you for that. And, yep. but it doesn't just stop at what you're about. Uh, it's not about how it was created. So shout out to that 16 year old, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's also about what the can of boss is doing now recently. And I believe it was yesterday, day before I had the opportunity to get on the 420 spot. Corey, you had a chance to get on a, uh, the 420 spot too. Yep. I did. Yep. And tell us more, Kenna Boss, about the 420 spot, how people can participate and get involved as well, and what's what's coming up for the 420 awesome. spot. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so the 420 <laughs> spot is yet another baby of mine, right? Because the five yeah. kids I have wasn't enough. Um, <laughs> six, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the 420 spot, it really is a place. Education is big for me. It's key for me. Uh, you just touch on so many important and amazing things, but we have such an opportunity here, right? Um, our diversity as a nation is our greatest, most underutilized strength. Mm -hmm. We don't use it. When, when we know, and there's evidence that shows that diversity is how we grow, it, it could make us so powerful, right? right. Um, but part of that is not just the inclusivity, but the education, right? Bringing different perspective to the table is important in, in this growth, right? Because cannabis users are no, they're, they were never one thing, but now they're really not just one thing, right? Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's anybody, it's, it's your... 80 year old grandmother who's got glaucoma. Mm -hmm. It's your seven year old who has epilepsy. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, uh, the businessman, it's the, the guy on the street. It's, mm -hmm. it kind of is everybody. It doesn't look like one thing, which means right. there are different stories. There are different experiences. We're only scratching the surface on what this plant can do. Mm -hmm. So the 420 spot is a place where come as you are. Your story is just as valid as the next person's story. Come right. as you are and come to learn. I learn something every time I do it. It's not like I'm there teaching and others are, are my students. I'm learning something because this is this is in many ways new to me, right? Right, right. So 
um, in that being dragged into social media, I came across a particular platform that I was very glad and inquisitive to find out a little bit more oh, about. What's it called? It's called Fanbase. Um, okay. Okay. It's called Fanbase. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you, I heard about it almost a year ago uh, at an event called Black is Tech. Okay. And I am not a tech person. I actually <laughs> went for a client and I loved what I was hearing. I loved mm. the opportunities, the power, the, the strength of the folks talking. And I learned a lot. Um, one thing I learned was a lot of people are on a lot of media platforms where they're not necessarily getting paid an equivalent amount for the work that they do. Right. Mm -hmm. right and right. so when I heard about Fanbase, it was started by Isaac, uh, Isaac Hayes the third, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Isaac Hayes' son, and um, yep. and his mission was really in line with a lot of the things that I saw as valuable to me. You know, he wanted to make sure that content creators, all content creators, were paid for what the work that they were doing, right? And mm -hmm. I thought this is a really good place for me to start and grow my fan base and and get people to hear and to educate because right now it really isn't about me. It's really about getting the word out there. It's really about mm -hmm. connecting. Word. I mean, I told you guys about it because I'm like, that energy is needed. That intellect mm -hmm. is needed. And that that uh, view is needed. And, and all of that is just going to make us all richer and better, right? Mm -hmm. so I created the 420 spot as a place where people could come, share their experiences, whether it is their medical usage or their everyday usage. I do a little bit educating on what is and is not legal because I'm blessed to have this whole legal background that I bring mm -hmm. to people, right. right? And I can talk people through that. And I can talk people through whether it's their application process in their state, or it's how to connect with other people who might be venture capitalists, who want to connect mm -hmm. with them to help them launch their business. Mm -hmm. It really is a spot to connect. And I thought, what better name than the 420 spot? Yeah, um, the name is dope. No <laughs> pun intended. Yeah, yeah. yeah. certain words are hard to use, like dope, and weeds. Mm -hmm. I can't say my kids are growing like weeds anymore, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> As we talk about fan base, it brings up a few topics that within our community, within the minority culture, within the black and brown culture, uh, we can capitalize on. Okay. And it, it also applies to cannabis, the same principle, the same philosophy, right? It's producers versus consumers, right? Huh? When when you look at TikTok, TikTok, a lot of the trends, a lot of the stuff that just goes viral and just booms comes from the black community or the brown community. Like it, it comes from minorities. Yet those same minorities don't get the uh, credit, don't get the, the clout, the, the fame, the notoriety for, for any of that stuff, right? Yep. And, and, but yet our uh, colleagues in life uh, get the praise, fame, notoriety from what you created, right? Crazy. Which is why I, I love the concept of fan base created by uh, Isaac Hayes the third it's it's made uh, uh, can of boss you you mentioned this to us it's it's the new generation uh, of food right for us by us right yep, it's, it's the wave it's uh, a black man creating a platform so that minorities can take the creativity we have you know I've, I've said it so many times I'm gonna say it one more time. Uh, within the black community, we're, we're the number one consumers in the U.S., mm -hmm. right? But we're only 14% of the population. So think about that. Crazy. But yet the, the hip-hop culture is made by who? It's created by who? Black folks, the most creative people I've ever come across Ex like, exactly. in life, ever. And so now we can utilize, we can utilize those skill sets, the knowledge, the creativity and put it into a platform made for us and actually get paid for it off a of jump. Come like on. that's, that's powerful. You create that, that same dance you created on a platform that's not paying you anything. You take it to a, a platform that's made, and it's not just made for black and brown people. It's made for everybody, but yep. it's, it's meant to not limit you and put a cap 
on however much you can make. Right. How, but take it upon yourself to learn. Hop in the 420 spot. Right. Learn how learn how you can connect and then let's grow. Yeah. Literally and figuratively, right? <laughs> let's <laughs> let's let's grow as a community. Yeah. Let's figure out how we can get the ecosystem of our community going and and boom off of that, right? Yeah. It's one of the things I really love about this cannabis space, right? I think someone touched on, you know, no one has 50 years ahead of you in this game, right? Mm -hmm. We're all at the starting line together. This truly has the potential to be the great equalizer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because here's this plant <laughs> and it has the potential to be the great equalizer, but we can't keep our, we can't take our eyes off the prize, right? Because at the same time, it has the potential to be the greater divide. Mm -hmm. If we take our eyes off the prize, if we don't mm -hmm. get in this and get in it now before it goes where it's going to go, it's going to create even bigger gaps in yeah. the mm -hmm. of our education, in our economy. The Black community is going to see an even bigger divide. And the biggest insult that will be added to the injury of the war on drugs is that the very product that we were demonized for will be sold back to us. So we will be fueling Curse my heart, just hearing the entire me. industry. And you and we're going to buy it. When we were demonized by the same industries, right? Yep. So we have to be very careful not to chill and be like oh this is weed is legal yo that's great that's great but don't just be a consumer in this game right because it is slated to be a 30 billion dollar industry i think by the end of 2025 they say it's already 26 billion dollars in the u.s right so don't just be a consumer in that that would be a shame it would be a waste it would just be wrong on all levels not yeah. when there are still people sitting in prisons now with life sentences yeah. for non-violent minimal offenses that are marijuana related don't mm -hmm. allow this to pass us by you know mm -hmm. it just it makes no sense to me yeah and and one more thing about fan base and now this is one talking to isaac hayes the third hopefully hey make sure you tag him in this video folks that are watching this uh and this is also talking to the cannabis community so when it comes to um media branding, advertising, and marketing, and cannabis, there's a huge, there's a huge gap there. It, you can't, people's Facebook accounts, uh, uh, their uh, Instagram accounts, Twitter, all that stuff are being canceled. They put all this hard work into it because even though, let's say hemp and CBD is federally legal, it's still, uh, 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 a negative connotation in the eyes of many of the social media platforms. So, uh, Mr. Isaac Hayes III, this is an amazing opportunity to reach out to the cannabis community and make this platform open where the green space, where we say black, more black and brown faces in green spaces, you can make this a group a green space right. where it's safe for businesses, minority businesses, <clears throat> cannabis businesses to come in and actually promote their business without fear of their page getting shut down. And with that being said, check this out. With that being said, I think we need to go ahead and, you know, announce, announce something. Oh, what's that? What's that, Drew? What we need to announce? Uh, Cannaboss actually said that she told someone about fan base. I yep. believe she did. I believe she, she did, did tell she did tell someone about fan base, and that was us. So check this out. This is how we doing it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so check this out. We are uh, not literally but <laughs> popping all the buttons off. <laughs> popping right off. I, like, I, I have on this, this little yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't have buttons, but look. What you need to know is that the Canterbras are officially, officially, as of the record, during the recording of this content, are now on fan base. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes, Welcome yes. to the show, welcome to the show for everybody. Yes, welcome sir. to the show fan base. Look, we are, all, our content has been migrated, you know, has migrated yes. over to fan base, right, as of 
during this recording right here. So if you are watching this, we're already on there. Make sure you go uh, follow, subscribe, because we love, got so much like. love. And show your thanks and everything, because the Canna Bros are in the building, of course. Nice. First of all, before we get into everything that we have coming for you, we just want to once again thank the Canna Boss for ushering us into that. So mm -hmm. putting look, us on game. Putting us on game. Yeah. I love when we can get put on game, yeah. right? And it wasn't even about anything about law. <laughs> like, like this is right. So shout out to you, Canna Boss, for uh giving us the big alley oop so me and Corey executing. Could Awesome. Wow. I'm so excited. You, you know, we're, we've got some exciting things that we're working on, too, both through the NABCL. Um, I'm looking to do quite a few things with the 420 spot. Um, I'm checking out some opportunities in the metaverse for the 420 spot. So oh, I will announce that when go. that happens. We yeah. actually dropped an NFT on 420. Um, no. boss. It was called Sativa. So, you know, keep that, check it out, see what you get with that. Uh, reach out to me. You can find me through NABCL or through Fanbase. Looking for the Cannaboss, you can reach out to me that way. You can reach out to me through my um, business consulting firm, Evergreen Solutions. You can do that by going to www.theevergreensolutions.com and, and we can take it from there. I'm interested in conversations with everybody. LinkedIn, all social media platforms, reach out. Pull up. <laughs> hey, pull up. Pull up. <laughs> cool. We appreciate everybody hopping in on our first full episode of Word, Word on, on the, on the street. street. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been an amazing time here with the Canna Boss. And like Jarrell said, make sure you check our next episode out. Uh, we're going to talk about spicing up your life with CBD. Hey. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode of Word on the Street, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos. It's as easy as clicking the icon in the center of the screen. And don't forget to turn on your notifications because behind me comes the culture.